Chapter 346, Magical Medical Skill His breath is weak, his complexion is pale white and his pupils have indication of disorganized movements. I'm afraid he can't wait to be sent to the operating room. Please step aside, I have to treat him first. Said Tang Xiao in a deep voice. The doctor growled angrily, who are you? Why do you want to treat him? Who'll take responsibility if an accident were to happen? I'll take responsibility. Tang Xiao growled coldly as he pushed the two nurses aside and quickly examined the victim's injuries. It's bad. The broken bones have pierced the lungs, causing massive internal hemorrhage. The excess blood must be taken out and the broken bones that pierced his lungs have to be cleared. Suddenly, Tang Xiao turned his head and looked at one of the doctors and shouted, Two minutes. If you can't give me a set of silver needles within two minutes, then this man will have been killed by you. Go quickly, find me silver needles. What's happening here? The previous doctor who roared at Tang Xiao because of his initiative to help out with the treatments realized that that the two trolleys had stopped. He then immediately ran over and shouted. The doctor who had just been chided by Tang Xiao quickly said, Director Hu, this bastard is obstructing us. He even spit out nonsensical things. The man called Director Hu saw the victim's condition and was shocked inwardly. When his eyes landed on Tang Xiao, who was checking the victim's pulse, he asked in a heavy voice, Who are you? Why are you obstructing our treatment? Don't you know that treating patients is like fighting with fire? I'm also a doctor. I just heard you saying that the hospital don't have enough doctors and operating rooms, so I come to help. Tang Xiao replied in a deep voice, I don't care if you're a director, let's cut the crap here. I already examined him, he only has two minutes left. If you can't find me a set of silver needles, he'll die. Upon hearing it, director who was stunned. He immediately told the doctor who just reported to him, find silver needles. Quickly. Yes. Although he was reluctant, the doctor ran in large strides. Shifting his vision to Tang Xiao again, director who asked, you aren't a doctor from our hospital, right? Where do you work? I just saw you checking the victim's pulse. Are you a TCM doctor? I'm Tang Xiao. I work at Star City Chinese Medical Hospital, said Tang Xiao in a deep voice. Star City Chinese Medical Hospital? Isn't this hospital the one that gained fame recently? The one that's rumored to have a young divine doctor? And this name, doesn't it sound familiar? Director who raised his head and suddenly asked, Are you that rumored young divine doctor from Star City Chinese Medical Hospital? Tang Xiao quickly glanced at him and lightly said, It's not the time to talk. Send all patients with serious injuries here immediately. Moreover, make everyone around spread out to ensure that the air can circulate. Also, help me prepare a few basins of water and clean towels. Order the other doctors to bring surgery tools and work with me. Director Hu hesitated. He didn't know whether he should believe in Tang Xiao. After all, Tang Xiao looked too young. He himself was a senior doctor, yet he really didn't know how to deal with this unexpected emergency. I need to report to President Zhuge immediately. Tang Xiao didn't reply to him. Instead, he quickly treated the victim's trauma, stopping the bleeding. Inside the emergency room, the hospital's president Zhuge Wenfeng led several hospital's leaders as they strode toward the outside. He had just received a call from the fire department and immediately issued a preparation order to receive the victims. Dozens of workers were seriously injured due to the collapse of the construction site floor. For such big accident, he, as the hospital president, must rescue as many victims as possible. Even though he hadn't entered the operating room for the last six months, he was preparing to do the surgery personally. What happened? Why did you stop? After he arrived at the emergency room and saw the present scene, he immediately shouted aloud. Hu Chobwa's eyes brightened up. He strode forward and reported everything Tang Xiao had said from the beginning. Following that, 
he finally said, President. I think he's very likely to be a TCM doctor. So? So what? Do you want to make fun of this kind of matter? Take him. Heaven. The wounds of this man are no longer bleeding. What did that man just do? A nurse near the trolley suddenly called out loudly. Her voice directly interrupted Zhuge Wenfeng's words. Zhuge Wenfeng's expression changed and he strode over. He then asked in a deep voice, what happened? Seeing the president himself coming over, the nurse's nervousness looked obvious as she stutteringly replied, P. President. President, he just treated the victim, A and his wounds are no longer bleeding. Suddenly, Zhuge Wenfeng turned his head to Tang Xiao and loudly asked, Did you say you're a doctor in Star City Chinese Medical Hospital and your name is Tang Xiao? Yes. Tang Xiao, who was in front of the patient and stopped his bleeding, gave a simple reply. Zhuge Wenfeng quickly took his mobile and dialed a cell phone number. After his call connected, he quickly asked, President Li Hongji. I'm the Shanghai First Public Hospital's President Zhuge Wenfeng. We've met before in the medical exchange conference in Beijing. <laughs> it's President Zhuge. What kind of wind brought your voice to me today? Anyhow, is there something you need from me? Li Hongji's voice came out of the mobile. Yeah, I want to ask you about someone. Said Zhuge Wenfeng, does your Star City Chinese Medical Hospital have a young doctor called Tang Xiao? Li Hongji was surprised and asked back, what are you asking about Tang Xiao for? He's really a doctor in my hospital, though. There was an accident at a construction site in Shanghai, resulting in a lot of seriously injured victims. He stopped the doctors in my hospital in doing their duty and dealt with the victims himself. Said Zhuge Wenfeng. Let him do it, replied Li Hongji without hesitation. Is his medical skill that good? Zhuge Wenfeng asked in astonishment, President Li, you must know that the victim's conditions are very serious. If we don't perform the surgery promptly, I'm afraid. President Zhuge, if my memory serves me right, you contacted me more than a month ago wanting to see the young divine doctor from my hospital, right? said Li Hongji in a deep voice. Tang Xiao is that young divine doctor. You should be happy with your luck since he's able to help treat the victims in your hospital. What? He's that young divine doctor? That's right. Shocked and astonishment covered Zhuge Wenfeng's face. After hanging up the phone, he turned his head to look at the victims around and suddenly shouted, Get all the victims inside for examination. Also, the doctor who will treat them is Dr. Tang. I'll take responsibility should any problems arise later. Yes. Hu Chiobua and the other hospital leaders, as well as nurses, carried out his order conscientiously, despite being unable to understand why the president assigned the duty to Tang Xiao. Following that, Zhuge Wenfeng turned to look at Tang Xiao and exclaimed. I had never thought that the young divine doctor from Star City Chinese Medical Hospital would be you. What Li Hongji has said was true. Seeing you here is really fortunate. Tang Xiao didn't say anything and only looked at him with a dull expression. He never liked any troublesome matters. And he feared that this Zhuge Wenfeng would be someone like Li Hongji who always annoyed him. He came to Shanghai to study. He didn't want to be invited to work at Shanghai First Public Hospital. The silver needles are here. The doctor in white coat returned quickly. After receiving the silver needles, Tang Xiao said in a deep voice, tell the others to disperse as far as possible. Moreover, order the doctors in the hospital to be prepared and leave the victims with the most severe injuries to me. As for the other victims, bring them to the operating rooms to be treated by your hospital's doctors. Zhuge Wenfeng nodded immediately and conveyed Tang Xiao's orders down. Using the silver needles to seal off the blood vessels and stop the victim's internal bleeding, Tang Xiao transferred his star force and then carefully guided the extravasated blood into the throat. Cough, cough. Two minutes later, the victim coughed and simultaneously spat out large mouthfuls of black blood. 
After the victim coughed the black blood out for the sixth time, Tang Xiao held him up to a sitting posture and used his palm to hold the victim's back. Scalpel. Tang Xiao said in a deep voice. At this time, the hospital had prepared a set of clean surgical tools. After a doctor opened the toolbox, Tang Xiao glanced at it and took a very sharp-looking scalpel. Without hesitation, he used it to cut the man's chest right at his lungs. This. Shocked, Zhuge Wenfang was dumbstruck. So were the first public hospital's leaders, doctors, and nurses in the surrounding. Never had they imagined that someone would perform a surgery under public eyes. Even the act looked so crude and brutal. Putting away the scalpel, Tang Xiao then took the tweezer and directly inserted it into the wound. Two seconds. That's right. It was definitely only two seconds. Zhuge Wenfang and the others witnessed it with their own eyes. After Tang Xiao inserted the tweezer into the victim's wound, he took it out quickly along with a piece of a rice-like sized bone clamped by the tweezer. Heaven, how did he know that there was a bone inside? At the side, Hu Chiobua stared wide-eyed as he exclaimed out in disbelief. His shock and disbelief was also felt by the others. As for Tang Xiao, he ignored Hu Chiobua and continued inserting the tweezer into the victim's wound to remove the broken bones inside ceaselessly. Finally, he took a deep breath to focus his energy before inserting the tweezer into the wound yet again. Under the observation of his spiritual sense, he took the broken pieces of bones with extreme caution. Your hospital should have cardiotonic, yes. You must inject it into the man's body within five minutes. Also, tell one of your doctors to suture the man's wound. Leaving a trace of star power inside the victim's lungs, Tang Xiao turned his head and spoke. Zhuge Wenfeng immediately ordered someone to bring cardiotonic. After that, he asked with a confused expression, is it done? Yeah, I have removed all the pieces of broken bones that pierced his lungs. Tang Xiao nodded and said, it won't be a problem, you only need to suture the wound. However, his heartbeat is slowing down very fast. Even though I have done all I can, I only alleviated it a bit. He will probably be in a comatose state for a long time after you inject the cardiotonic, but his life is no longer in danger. Zhuge Wenfang's eyes blazed as though a torch as he stared deeply at Tang Xiao and asked, how did you do it? Well, every doctor has his own talents and abilities, and these are mine. Anyway, let's not waste any more time. Take me to the other severely injured victims. All right. Zhuge Wenfeng no longer asked. Suddenly, a nurse spoke in undertone voice, Did you notice that the victim's wound wasn't bleeding when Dr. Tang was treating him? Chapter 347, Startled by an Outstanding Man the nurse's remark caused everyone who was about to leave to instantly halt. Then, a group of leaders led by Zhuge Wenfeng, two doctors, and many nurses fixated their eyes on the previous patient. The man wasn't bleeding? A shocked expression could be seen on everyone's faces. Observing for more than ten seconds, Zhuge Wenfeng watched Tang Xiao's back as the latter strode into the emergency room. He was shocked to the extreme. During his career of tens of years as a doctor, he had seen countless small and big cases as well as innumerable surgeries. Yet, never once had he ever seen such a case where the patient's wound didn't bleed. In particular, back when Tang Xiao cut open the victim's muscles to extract the broken bones from the lungs, it was definitely devoid of blood that normally should be gushing out. Hu Chiobua's lips quivered a few times as he murmured, Back then, I saw him pressing on some spots around the patient's wound. Could it be, he was using the bloodstream acupoints sealing method? The bloodstream acupoints sealing method? Zhuge Wenfeng's expression changed. He quickly asked, Are you sure he pressed some acupoints around the victim's wound? Yeah, I was not the only who saw it, so were many others, Hu Chiobua nodded solemnly. Zhuge Wenfeng looked at the others and saw them nodding. He immediately chased after Tang Xiao. He wanted to observe Tang Xiao's treatment methods to verify how he did it. 
in front of the operating room's door on the second floor. Seven or eight migrant workers gathered around a dozen nurses and argued loudly. They followed their workmates to the hospital and had been waiting anxiously, but the hospital didn't have enough operating rooms. What made them the most furious was that the doctors only took the workers with light injuries into the operating rooms, while the other four workers with the most severe injuries had to wait outside. Please don't get agitated. The order was issued by the hospital president himself. A very skillful doctor has come to our hospital and he will treat these last four patients personally. Also, please step back. If you gather around here, it will disturb the doctor's treatment. Said a nurse loudly. A dark-skinned, thin middle-aged man shouted, You're not deceiving us, are you? Our brothers have the most serious injuries. Who's this skillful doctor? Don't you know that saving people is like fighting fire? If by any chance. No, there's no ifs. A cold voice sounded behind them. Tang Xiao broke open the crowd blocking him. Quickly circling around the patients on the four trolleys, he vision finally landed on one of the victims. Cough, cough. The wounded man coughed two mouthfuls of blood and suddenly sat up. A steel bar had pierced his chest, with about 20 centimeters of it exposed on the outside. The man then shouted with a strenuous effort, Zizhu Zhi. Zizhu Zhi. Brother Daquan, I'm here. The dark-skinned, thin middle-aged man rushed over and quickly said, Brother Daquan, please don't speak. The doctor will be here right away. Bluish-green veins protruded on Daquan's forehead. He tried hard to squeeze out a smile and said with extreme difficulty, Zizhu Zhi. I, know, about, my injury. P please, promise, me, to take, care, of, my family. Big beads of tears uncontrollably gushed out from Zhu Zhi's eyes, dripping down and wetting his clothes. He raised his hand to wipe his tears and loudly replied, I know, I know, Brother Daquan. Please don't worry. Your parents will be my parents from now on. I'll definitely look after them until they grow old and arrange them a proper burial after they die. Xiolan and I will also help to look after elder sister-in-law and your child. You can rest assured. T thanks. Brother, T thanks. Daquan coughed another mouthful of blood as his body softly fell down on the trolley. Tang Xiao grabbed Daquan's wrist. He could feel the life force quickly leaving the man's body. Under his spiritual sense, he had already examined the man's internal body condition. He saw that the man had a broken bone piercing his heart. While shaking his head, Tang Xiao turned away to another wounded man at the side. Doctor. Where the fuck did that doctor go? Zhu Zhi's eyes turned bloodshot and growled furiously. Tang Xiao was examining another wounded man when Zhu Zhi roared. He shook his head and said, there's no way to save him. A piece of broken bone has pierced his heart. Who the fuck are you, idiot? Zhu Zhi howled. I'm saddened to say, but your brother has already passed away. Tang Xiao's expression turned cold, but if you dare to speak insulting words at me again, I don't mind watching the rest of your brothers die. Step aside, please. Otherwise, nobody else will treat them. Zhu Zhi's breathing paused before he replied, Are you the doctor? Yes. Tang Xiao said with a cold and detached tone. Zhu Zhi waved to his other workmates, hinting to all of them to move backward. The diagnosis and treatment kept Tang Xiao busy for 20 minutes before he completely treated the other three severely injured victims. What he could do was preserve their lives. Hence, it wouldn't be a problem to leave their post-treatment recuperation and rehabilitation to the hospital. You're President Shuga, right? Their lives are no longer in danger, so I'll hand over the post-treatment issues to your hospital. Also, I'll take my leave since I still have another matter to attend to. After having observed all the diagnosis and treatment methods performed by Tang Xiao, Zhuge Wenfeng was still unable to make sense of what he had witnessed. It was too mysterious. 
The treatment used traditional Chinese medical methods, this field was not within his expertise. Thus, upon hearing that Tang Xiao was about to leave, he hesitated for a moment before he finally replied, Divine Dr. Tang, could you wait a bit longer? Many wounded are currently undergoing surgery in the operating room now. I'm afraid of some problems arising. The surgeries are currently being handled by the other doctors. But you want me to deal with the problem again should something go wrong? President Shuka, you're just talking in a roundabout way, aren't you? I know what you're worried about. You're afraid that I didn't cure them and am only wasting time for them to be saved, no? <laughs> Fine, I'll give you my number. You can contact me directly should any problems arise. Having his thoughts nakedly exposed, Zhuge Wenfeng looked a bit awkward and embarrassed. However, as experienced as he was, his awkward expression quickly disappeared as he forced a smile and said, Divine Dr. Tang, please don't misunderstand me. You have superb medical skills, while I also have observed your treatment methods you performed on the victims. How can I think that? The reason I wanted you to stay was that I once thought of visiting you in Star City Chinese Medical Hospital before. But President Li Hongji denied me back then. Why did you want to see me? asked Tang Xiao with a doubtful expression. Don't tell me you don't know that you're already quite famous as a grandmaster in the medical field? It was not only me. Lots of others also went to Star City personally, only to return disappointed. President Shuka, I hope you won't spread the matter about me treating the victims here at First Public Hospital. Tang Xiao creased his brows and said, I'm currently studying at Shanghai University, so I don't have time to receive anyone, nor I want any burden and troublesome matters. I understand. Zhuge Wenfeng nodded and said, Our hospital's doctors and nurses absolutely won't disclose anything about this matter. You can rest assured. Nodding to him in response, Tang Xiao gave his cell number to Zhuge Wenfeng and quickly left the hospital. Half an hour later, the five victims who had been treated by Tang Xiao had been examined using medical instruments. The doctor in charge of the examination put the medical reports on Zhuge Wenfeng's desk. However, the shocked expression on his face hadn't yet subsided. Those seriously injured victims' conditions are stabilizing and their injuries are no longer life-threatening. There's one thing beyond comprehension, though. It's about the victim with the lung's trauma. His wound is actually in the process of being healed at a very fast rate. Zhuge Wenfeng picked up the examination reports. After reading it slowly and carefully, he couldn't help sighing in praise. He indeed deserves to be called as the young divine doctor who has created a sensation in the medical world. Even his methods of treating those victims are not something I can hope to achieve. The most obvious characteristic of those five victims is their excessive blood loss. If our doctors performed surgery on them, I'm afraid that their chance of living would be no more than 10%. The doctor sighed in approval and praise, that's right. It's very fortunate to have him act today. Or else, I'm afraid. Zhuge Wenfeng waved his hand, do you remember what he said before he left? Nevertheless, since he doesn't want to be famous in our place, then we mustn't do anything against his will and make things difficult for him. In any case, don't announce the content of these reports to the others. And notify the other doctors and nurses to not talk too much about this matter. Understood. The doctor complied and then turned to leave the office. While sitting in his office chair, Zhuge Wenfeng thought for a while. He then took out his mobile and dialed Li Hongji's cell number. Hello, President Li. It's Zhuge Wenfeng. Ah. Uh. President Zhuge, how is the situation over there? President Li, I have to say something. The medical skills of that young divine doctor, Tang Xiao, are really amazing. Never have I seen the likes of it in the entirety of my life. I finally understood now why he caused such a big sensation even though he only worked at your Star City Chinese Medical Hospital, for a short time. Li Hongji laughed, of course I know that his medical skills level is amazing. To be honest with you, 
I'm even willing to give him my hospital president seat if he could work at our Star City Chinese Medical Hospital every day. Suga Wenfang's expression changed. He smiled and said, Presidently, how about having a small talk between us? You know Tang Xiao is currently studying at Shanghai University, right? Since our first public hospital is near his campus, could you let Tang Xiao come to work at our hospital? You can count it as Zhuge Wenfeng owing you a big a favor as long as you agree. Poaching? Li Hongji fell into silence for a while before he replied in a bitter tone, President Zhuge, it's not like I don't want you to owe me a big favor. But I can't do that. The reason as to why Tang Xiao was willing to come and give medical services in our Star City Chinese Medical Hospital was because I begged him over and over. So, if he's willing to go to Shanghai First Public Hospital and work there, I naturally have nothing to say about it. Presidently, you mean the initiative is in Tang Xiao's hands? <laughs> I see. Laughed Shuga Wenfeng in a clear voice. Anyway, I have to say thanks to you, presidently. Anyhow, when you have some time, please come to Shanghai. I'll invite you to drink some nice wine. No problem. No problem. Said Li Hongji with a few words. In the president office of Star City Chinese Medical Hospital, Li Hongji's expression turned gloomy after he hung up the phone. He was quite depressed since Zhuge Wenfeng basically wanted to poach Tang Xiao. But he also knew that he didn't have any rights to restrain Tang Xiao's choice. Despite the fact that Tang Xiao could be considered as a Star City Chinese Medical Hospital's doctor, it was because he used both hard and soft means to beg and pester Tang Xiao until he came to work there. He was a bit worried. If by any chance Tang Xiao were to be poached by Zhuge Wenfeng, would Tang Xiao still want to stay at Star City Chinese Medical Hospital later? How many times would he be able to come and give medical services by then? Chapter 348 Dire Situation After a long while, Li Hongji dialed Tang Xiao's cell number. After Tang Xiao answered his call, he quickly laughed, Hi, Tang Xiao. Zhuge Wenfeng told me about your actions in Shanghai First Public Hospital. It's really great, you've brought glorious honor to our Star City Chinese Medical Hospital. At the moment, Tang Xiao was on the way back to Blue Star Villa Complex. Hearing Li Hongji's words, he calmly said, It's nothing but a coincidence encounter and luck, that's all. Tang Xiao, if by any chance Zhuge Wenfeng offers you a chance to work in Shanghai First Public Hospital, are you gonna take it? Probed Li Hongji. I've told you that I don't want to be a genuine doctor, haven't I? Tang Xiao said, I originally promised to give medical services in your Chinese medical hospital due to the concern of my mother being hospitalized there. Since you did well in looking after her, I owed you a favor. So no, I won't go to Shanghai First Public Hospital. Secretly relieved inwardly, Li Hongji laughed, I see. Since you don't want to go, no one will dare to force you. Anyhow, if Zhuge Wenfeng looks for you, just turn him down. He just called me and wanted to poach you. I told him straightly that you're the only one who has the rights to decide. Ah, uh. you're calling me for this reason, aren't you presidently? Laughed Tang Xiao. But of course. I'm urging you to come back, though. Li Hongji laughed and said, let's put off our discussion about this matter until you come back on October 1st, shall we? All right, replied Tang Xiao. Blue Star Villa Complex When Tang Xiao arrived at the villa complex entrance, the previous security guard, whom he was a bit familiar with, saluted him and warmly said, You're back, Mr. Tang. Anyways, some friends of yours came. They said they'd be waiting for you in the nearby shopping street Starbucks. Friends? Are you not mistaken? Tang Xiao was puzzled and said, I came to Shanghai just recently, and only a handful of people know that I live here. So how can there be any friends of mine coming look for me here? Tang Xiao was silent for a moment. After nodding and saying thanks, he didn't hurry to enter the villa complex. Instead, he walked toward the nearby shopping street. 
He knew the Starbucks location there, since it was on the way to Shanghai University. At the Starbucks. The interior was spacious and exquisitely decorated, fully showcasing itself as a premium upscale sit. At the moment, there were only a few visitors in the cafe, except for a young man who was currently typing on his laptop keyboard with four middle-aged men sitting around him. After entering the cafe, Tang Xiao saw the person who was typing on his laptop. It was Tang Wei, who now wore a solemn expression. Why are you here? Tang Xiao sat down and calmly asked. Tang Wei looked up and his eyes brightened up when he saw Tang Xiao. He directly closed his laptop and said with a smile, I was just passing by here. I know you're studying at Shanghai University, so I came to see you. Anyhow, how are you faring here? Tell me if you lack or need anything. Do you think I'm poor? Tang Xiao shook his head and smiled. I already know that you're not poor, brother. Tang Wei grinned and said, but it's not like a big brother can't give a bit of affection, no? By the way, Auntie knew I would pass by in Shanghai, so she wanted me to bring you something. What is it? Asked Tang Xiao. Tang Wei looked around and replied, it's kinda inconvenient to give it to you here. Shall we go to your house and have a chat there? All right. Tang Xiao nodded. After the duo got up and left, the four middle-aged men following behind them. Tang Xiao inquired secretly and learned that these four middle-aged men were Tang Wei's bodyguards. As they arrived at the villa in Blue Star Villa Complex, the four bodyguards stayed in the courtyard, while Tang Xiao and Tang Wei entered the first floor hall. After taking a seat, Tang Wei handed over a leather suitcase and said, the things Auntie Min wanted me to give you are inside. Tang Xiao took the suitcase and opened it. A moment after, he was startled. A silver pistol, for fully loaded bullet clips, and a particularly sharp-looking dagger. What's the meaning with this? Tang Xiao looked up and asked with a puzzled expression. Our Tang family is in trouble now. Tang Wei said with a bitter smile, Auntie Min is afraid you would be in danger since you're alone in Shanghai. So she wanted me to give you these things for self-protection. Two of the four bodyguards outside will be assigned to you after I leave. But don't worry. They will only protect you in the dark and won't affect your normal life. Tang Xiao creased his brows. After being silent for a long time, only then did he ask. Does the situation is very serious now? Not really. Tang Wei shook his head and said, Only Guangyang and Fukong are in a terrible mess right now. This time, I'm precisely leaving Beijing for Guangyang. Tell me about the current situation. Said Tang Xiao. Don't worry. Uncle has brought some people to Guangyang and the crisis has been suppressed for the time being. Tang Wei said with a smile, only, the Starlight Group, which is secretly under the control of our Tang family, had been burnt down by some people. While a large number of the Starlight Group's HQ staff have been transferred to the neighboring city. The situation has developed to this point, asked Tang Xiao, frowning. The Yao family has been secretly devising their schemes for several years, to begin with. They had been reluctant to act because they hadn't reached agreements with the other families in Guangyang and Fukong. Recently, a certain powerful figure of the Yao family, who had just come back from abroad, brought back several ruthless individuals, all of whom are experts in combat and assassination. Hence, unbeknownst to us of what means he used, the Yao family has finally reached a cooperation agreement with the Guangyang and Fukong's families. What is his name? Yao Xinhua. Tang Xiao closed the suitcase and pushed it back to Tang Wei, saying, Take these things back. I don't need it. Also, you don't have to assign any bodyguards to me. Let alone the Yao family, even those so called martial arts grandmasters won't be able to deal with me. So be it. I'll go with you to Guangyang. Tang Wei was stunned for a moment. He quickly waved his hand and said, no, no, no. That won't do. It's fine if you really don't want to take them, but it's a big no-no for you to go with me to Guangyang. 
If grandpa knows I dragged you into this, he will surely break my legs. He has decreed that he must make you at ease while studying in Shanghai. Even if the sky is falling, the Tang family must give you the best of everything. Tang Xiao raised his brows and didn't express his warm feeling inside. He said, Big brother, don't you think that I also have some duties when an accident befalls the family? Besides, I think that staying and studying at school is not that useful. Only going through thick and thin can we grow rapidly. But Grandpa already sent out, Tang Wei raised his hand to touch his nose and smiled. I'll tell Grandpa about this myself. Tang Xiao interrupted him and said seriously, the schooling hasn't yet started formally, while I also have asked for a leave from the military training subject. Using this time, I'll go with you to Guangyang to see what the enemy's methods are. Then you call Grandpa yourself. Tang Wei lifted his hand and said. Tang Xiao took his mobile and dialed a cell number. Hello, Xiao? Tang Guixing's voice came out of the phone. Yes, it's me, Grandpa. Is there something, Xiao? said Tang Guixing with a smile. I just met Tang Wei. He said he's going to Guangyang and I want to go with him. I won't act recklessly there, so you don't need to worry about it. Xiao, the situation there is very chaotic. Just last night, some of our trusted men who have been trained by us were attacked in the hotel. Although the ones who did it seem to be a group of local ruffians on the surface, it's that little bastard, Yao Xinhua of the Yaos who pulled the strings. It's too dangerous for you to go to Guangyang. Tang Guisheng replied in a wry tone. I have the ability to protect myself. I won't be careless. Tang Guisheng was silent for a moment before he asked, Are you sure with your decision? Yes, I'm sure, said Tang Xiao seriously. Since you insist, then go. Give the phone to Tang Wei. Tang Guisheng sighed. All right. Tang Xiao handed the phone over. Taking the phone, Tang Wei then spoke a few words with Tang Guisheng. After he hung up the phone, he said, Grandpa commanded me. It's not impossible for you to go with me to Guangyang. But he said that you must be with me 24-7. Wait a bit. I'll pack my things. Tang Xiao admittedly nodded. Ten minutes later, Tang Xiao carried a simple bag and then left with Tang Wei. We need to stop by at Shanghai's Konghong 4S shop first. I have to give something to my classmates. Tang Wei nodded and used the GPS to locate Konghong 4S shop. At the shop, Yu Kai and Zhao Liang were commenting and circling around an Audi A4, while a staff member explained each function of the Audi A4's features to them. Yu Kai. Tang Xiao called out as he entered. Yu Kai had received a call from Tang Xiao beforehand. Slightly running with a beaming smile, he then said, Eldest brother Tang, what do you want me to deliver to teacher Han? Tang Xiao took out two keys and some documents. As he handed it over to him, he said, Give these to her and help me request a leave of absence. I won't attend the military training, but I have requested a leave of absence for this too. I'll be back before the military training is over. You can actually get a leave of absence and skip the military training? Yukai was stunned for a moment and said in astonishment, Wow, that's so amazing, dude. But, eldest brother Tang, that means you're about to leave Shanghai? Yeah, I must leave Shanghai for some time to handle some matters. Said Tang Xiao. What happened? asked Yukai. Some things happened in my family, said Tang Xiao. All right. I'll deliver these things to teacher Han. But don't forget, mate, you have to make up for the dinner since you can't do so tonight. Yu Kai nodded and said. Sure. Tang Xiao nodded. Immediately afterward, Tang Xiao greeted Zhao Liang, Hu Ching Song, and the others. After that, he left Kong Hong for S shop to gather with Tang Wei, who was waiting outside, and quickly rushed to the airport. On the taxi. I've just checked something. Tang Wei frowned, our flight to Guangyang is about an hour after the last work hour. 
Now is precisely the rush hour, as the work hour just ended. If we get trapped in a traffic jam on the road, I'm afraid we can't get to the airport in time. Chapter 349, Unforeseen Circumstances Shanghai Airport Even after they arrived there, Tang Wei still remained puzzled even after pondering for a long time as he followed Tang Xiao straight through the VIP pathway and then, to the apron. Tang Wei was utterly shocked as he looked at the private jet in front with two men and four women dressed as pilots and flight attendants standing under its ladder. Nowadays, along with the growth and improvement in the living standard and the emergence of a large number of billionaires in the country, only bigwigs could afford to purchase private planes. As a scion from a big respected Chinese family himself, he also knew a number of billionaires who owned private planes. The limit was around 1,500 individuals and he dared to guarantee that those powerful billionaires who owned private jets in the country would not exceed 1,500. It had to be known that China was a great power, with a population of more than 1 billion. Thus, 1,500 was a small number. And speaking about it, how could Tang show? Welcome, Mr. Tang. We submitted an application to take off to Shanghai Airport and they have already confirmed that we can take off in about 35 minutes. The private jet pilot said respectfully. All right, let's go aboard. Tang Xiao nodded. Walking alongside Tang Xiao, Tang Wei still wore a shocked expression on his face as he asked whispered, Brother, what's all this about? Where did you get this jet? While climbing the ladder, Tang Xiao smiled and said, I borrowed it from a friend of mine. What kind of friend it is to be so generous? To think that he directly lent his private jet for you to use it will so casually? Tang Wei said with an incredulous look, besides if my guess is correct, this private jet should also have been parked in Shanghai Airport, right? This friend of mine is from Jingmen Island. I have had quite a lot matters to deal with recently, so I directly borrowed it. Regardless, I'll give it back after I'm no longer busy. Seems like your relationship with this brother is really great. This brother of yours is worth making friends with. Tang Wei exclaimed in admiration. Brother? Tang Xiao was at a loss whether he had to cry or laugh, well, she's a she. Ugh, a woman? Tang Wei was stunned and asked in disbelief, then, she and you. A friend. Tang Xiao replied straightforwardly. Tang Wei slightly creased his brows. After thinking for a moment, he probed, as far as I know, there are only a few families in Shanghai who own a private jet, and probably only two women among them possess a private jet, one of whom is the madam of the Huang family. But I'm afraid it's very difficult to borrow it from her. Did you say she's your friend? Could she be the succubus who came to our ancestral house in Beijing back then? Huh? Tang Xiao replied in an odd expression, succubus? Yeah, that hag, Ouyang Lulu. Tang Wei heavily nodded and said, barbaric, crude, supercilious, cocky, and proud like a peacock. Tang Xiao was at a loss whether he had to laugh or cry upon listening all the adjectives Tang Wei spouted. After they entered the cabin, he grinned and asked, do you and Lulu have a grudge or something? Heck, it's really her. Tang Wei took a deep breath and forced a smile, no, there are no grudges between us, but I did eat some losses in her hands. Of course, it's not like I love to quarrel with women, to begin with. So I just let her off. Besides, our cousin, Chu Yi is her old classmate, and they have a good relationship. So I don't want to shame her. Actually, Lulu is a rather good person. Tang Xiao laughed, she's not as exaggerated as you say, though. She's indeed a bit unruly and naughty. Rather, she's very clever and kinda easy to bully. Easy to bully? Tang Wei was at a loss for words. When the duo sat themselves down at the plane, Tang Xiao showed a standby hand signal to the four bodyguards who came with them before speaking, anyways. We didn't talk back when Ouyang Lulu came to our ancestral home, but I can tell she likes you. Tang Xiao stared blankly for a moment and rolled his eyes. He really didn't get it. 
Why so many people like to guess and speculate? In Shanghai University, Yu Kai and Hu Qingsong said that Han Qingwu had a crush on him. Now, Tang Wei also said that Ouyang Lu Lu liked him. How come he himself didn't know that he was so attractive and charming? Nah. Stop talking nonsense. We're just good friends and business partners. Tang Wei only gave Tang Xiao an enigmatic and unfathomable smile in response and then turned his head. 7.30 p.m. The private jet landed at Guangyang's Guan City Airport. Hearing the news that Tang Wei would come, Tang Yunpeng had arranged some people to fetch them. When Tang Xiao and Tang Wei came out of the airport with four bodyguards, a middle-aged woman with six strong men in black suits quickly greeted them. Little Wei the middle-aged woman looked at Tang Xiao and then shifted her vision to Tang Wei as she said with a smile. Auntie Shui, how come you're picking us up yourself? asked Tang Wei with a smile. Guan City is a bit chaotic now. Your uncle is afraid that the Yao, Sun, and Yang families would secretly send some people to deal with you. Ever since they began attacking us, we have already lost more than 20 people. Said Shui Jia. It's fine if it's only the Yao's since they were always our enemy from the start. Tang Wei scowled as he growled, but I never thought that even the Sun and Yang families dared to join the fray. This time, even if we have to risk a big loss, we must give them head on blows. Shui Jia bitterly smiled inside. Tang Wei might not be clear about the situation. But she, being the general manager of the Starlight Group for several years, how could she possibly not know about the current situation? Let alone giving them a head-on blow, even protecting their own people was pretty problematic. Who is this? He's Tang Xiao, my younger cousin. Said Tang Wei promptly. Shui Jia looked surprised. She carefully observed Tang Xiao before showing a trace of a smile, I heard that the Tang family had found their missing child. Anyhow, I didn't expect you would come to Guan City, though. How do you do, Tang Xiao? I'm Shui Jia, the general manager of the Starlight Group. You can call me Aunt Shui. Brother, Auntie Shui is the sister of Uncle Tang Dong's wife. Said Tang Wei quickly. Tang Xiao suddenly understood and called out, How do you do, Auntie Shui? Nodding with a smile, Shui Jia then said, Let's go. Your big uncle is currently waiting in Red Maple Villa Complex. All right. Tang Wei nodded. More than 20 minutes later, as the car arrived at Red Maple Villa Complex, Shui Jia's mobile phone rang. After she accepted the call and chatted with the caller, her face immediately turned grim. Waiting until Shui Jie hang up the phone, Tang Wei then asked quickly, Something happened, Auntie Shui? The deputy director of our Starlight Group's finance department has been seized by some people. Shui Jie nodded and said, It's an intentional provocation from the other party, causing the deputy director to push the other party. And then, the other party acted like they were seriously injured and demanded compensation from the deputy director's family. Is this the Yao family's doing? asked Tang Wei indignantly. The Yao family is surely related to this. Shui Jie said, after all, at this juncture, only the Shui, Sun and Yang families are the ones who will direct people to do so. Just now your big uncle told me to send some people to rescue this deputy director by any means necessary. The deputy director of our Starlight Group's finance department knew the company accounts. And if the Yao family gets our business secrets, it will be very detrimental to us. Where did that finance department's deputy director got caught? asked Tang Xiao quickly. Changbu Town, the Earth Cabinet Factory. Said Shui Jia. Shall we change our destination to Changbu Town? asked Tang Wei. We're going there now. Shui Jia nodded and said, We must rescue that deputy director in the shortest possible time. Additionally, your big uncle has also sent a group to Changbu Town as well. Is the source reliable? Have our people looked into the information? We had better, Tang Xiao suddenly asked. Shui Jia looked at Tang Xiao and said, The people who seized the deputy director told his family to deliver the compensation money there. 
If my guess is correct, I'm afraid this is a trap. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, nevertheless, it's an open trap. We know that it's a trap, but we still have no choice but to jump into into. I'm sure that the deputy director is not in Changbu Town's Earth Cabinet Factory. Care to tell the reason? Shui Jia slightly creased her brows and asked. Since the other party wants to get the Starlight Group's financial information from the finance department's deputy director, they won't let us save him that easily. Nevertheless, they clearly knew that we'd save him. So, even if he is bait, they won't rashly take any risks like leaving the deputy director there. Hence, they sent us a message. That's enough to lead us. Shui Jia squinted her eyes. Her being able to control the entire Starlight Group was due to her extraordinary wisdom and ability, to begin with. Thus, she had actually already thought of this. Only, she had no other way but to send people to Chengbu Town. Tang Xiao, since you can infer this kind of possibility. Then, do you have any way around it? It's very simple. We must still go to Chengbu Town. However, we must do things carefully. Tang Xiao said, we must first inquire about the internal situation of the Earth Cabinet Factory, and then devise a plan. Moreover, we have to mobilize all of our power in Guangyang to find the place where the deputy director is being held. Said Tang Xiao. Shui Jia smiled forced a smile and said, our intelligence network in Guangyang has been nearly cut off. Although we still have a lot of manpower, without knowing the complete picture, we'll be just like headless flies scattered about, no? Tang Xiao was silent for a moment before he took out his mobile and dialed a cell phone number. Who am I speaking with? A low and deep voice came out from the phone. I'm Tang Xiao. Gu Xiaoxue gave me your number. Said Tang Xiao. The other party quickly replied with an excited tone, Gu Xiaoxue. The little boss of the Everlasting Feast Hall? Yes. Ah, uh, I see. So you're the new boss of the Everlasting Feast Hall, Mr. Tang, right? Correct, it's me. For you to look for me, you have a command for me? Tang Xiao asked, Does your family have an intelligence network in Guangyang? I'll have to trouble you to help me investigate something. Which city? Guan City. I have a network there. I'll text you about the person I need you to investigate later. The man was captured, and the other party may have relations with the Sun and Yang families. Please do bear mind that you have to keep your tracks hidden in this investigation. All right. I'll rush to Guan City immediately. Wait for the news. You don't have act personally. It's fine for you to send out the order. I'm afraid that I still have some things that might inconvenience you later. No problem. It's not a hassle at all. This is what we should do. Chapter 350 Information Tang Xiao hung up the phone and asked Shui Jia about the deputy director's information. After that, he compiled it into an SMS and sent it to the other party. Then, he looked at Shui Jia and said, We'll go to Changbu Town and wait for the news from the intelligence. If they can provide us the location where the deputy director is being held, we'll immediately rush there to save him. If they can't find it, then we can only think of ways around to find out the actual situation in the Earth Cabinet Factory. If we can bite those tough nuts, we'll demand interest first. Looking at Tang Xiao with a strange expression, Shui Jia silently nodded. With a curious expression hanging on his face, Tang Wei inquired, Brother, who did you ask for help? You have acquaintances in Guangyang? I don't have any acquaintances in Guangyang that I know of. Tang Xiao shook his head and said, But I have some friends I know quite well in Fukong. Let's wait and see. I hope they can help us find the place where that deputy director is being held. Seeing that Tang Xiao didn't want to disclose the other party's identity directly, Tang Wei no longer asked. Regardless of who it was, it'd already be a pleasant, unexpected surprise if they could get the intelligence information through Tang Xiao. Changbu Town was the second largest town in Guan City. 
With factories in its every corner, it raised Changbu Town's economy to a high level, while a large number of migrants caused the city to have prosperous and thriving scenes everywhere. Earth Cabinet Factory itself produced high-class furniture products that were exported abroad. The industrial plant had two courtyard walls. The outer courtyard wall and the inside wall were separated by 50 meters, with a workshop in the middle for the workers to make furniture. Aside from the two office buildings inside, there was also another workshop to store the finished cabinet furniture. In the past, the Earth Cabinet Factory was very bustling, with busy workers at every corner. Forklifts selecting the planks that shuttled between the workshop. Today, however, it was deserted and devoid of any activities except for some occasional sounds. On the roof of one of the three-storied office buildings, a stalwart foreign man stood between the solar water tanks holding a binocular, watching the scenario outside the factory. Behind him were dozens of armed men. Some of them were wiping their firearms with icy glints in their eyes. A.I. Morue, how's the situation outside? The stalwart foreign man, Topherson, came out and spoke. The enemy has yet to show up. We're still on the lookout. Okay, keep in touch. Having said that, Topherson stuffed the mobile into his pocket. He then turned to look at a big man tens of meters away from him with a bit of contempt in his eyes. These strong men who were seemingly vicious and fierce, in his eyes, were but only waxy heads with silver guns, looked impressive, but were useless. Bracing yourselves up, eh? When the enemies come and you can't do your job, I'll cut your fucking head off myself. A middle-aged man coldly harumphed, Topherson, my family's young master may have ordered us to listen to your commands, but don't be too crazy. You may have your martial arts, but are you faster than a bullet? Giving him a hideous grin in response, Topherson revealed his white teeth and said, You wanna try? Humph. The middle-aged man did want to give him a shot, yet he didn't dare to. He could clearly see this foreign man's importance in the eyes of his young master. Were he to start against this man, he would perhaps die miserably later. Ten minutes later, the phone Topherson stuffed in his pocket suddenly vibrated. What's the situation? Four suspicious cars were seen on the outside. There are four men in each car, for a total of twelve. No one got off, and someone is using a binocular to observe the entrance of the cabinet factory. A.I. Murue's voice was heard from the phone. Don't alarm them. The Chinese have an old saying, let these gentlemen come into the trap themselves. We'll attack them after they enter the factory from both the inside and the outside. We must wipe out the enemy by all means necessary. Topherson, I know you want to kill people, but Captain commanded that if we can catch them alive, then keep their lives if possible. There could be high-level figures among the enemy. So we can get useful information from them. I know. Topherson coldly replied and hung up the phone. Near the Earth Cabinet Factory. For SUVs quietly parked at the roadside. In front of the car, Li Xiaojia put away the binoculars. He turned his head toward the youth on the front seat and said, Notify the others. Nobody is to leave the car without permission. Chief Shui said that we must wait for them to arrive and then act together. All right. The youth on the front seat nodded and immediately grabbed his mobile phone. Time passed by. Changbu Town, flat out skating rink. Recently, Jiang Xiaohu felt confident and at ease. He became the younger brother in charge of the public venue, Flat Out Skating Rink. A few days ago, he helped the Flat Out Skating Rink's owner in solving a thorny issue because of his fighting skills. Hence, he was promoted into the little gang leader in charge of the site. However, today, which was the day for weekend money share, he returned from the outside with his four little brothers and found no visitors when he took a stroll around the skating rink. What the heck is happening today? We usually have so many visitors. But how come no one came today? Jiang Xiaohu turned his head and asked. I don't know either. I haven't heard about the site being closed today, a young man who had been hanging out with him for a long time shook his head and said. 
eldest brother, look over there, near the ice skating shoes storage room door. What are those two guys doing there? Jiang Xiaohu was stunned and stared blankly. When he looked toward the direction, he suddenly creased his brows and walked over with his four little brothers, shouting, Hey, what the hell are you doing here? This place is our flat-out skating rink business, you. A dark muzzle was aimed at them in response. One of the burly guys growled with killing intent glinting in his eyes, Get the fuck out if you don't want to die. Jiang Xiaohu's complexion changed, while the four youths behind him looked alarmed and afraid as they retreated two steps. Jiang Xiaohu took a deep breath and asked in a heavy voice, I'm here to see the sight. I'm not afraid of you even if you have a gun. I wanna know, what the hell are you doing in our turf? Also, where's our boss? Immediately, two people came out of the skate shoes storage room. One of whom was a chubby middle-aged man who was the boss of flat-out skating rink. The man looked a bit bitter and astringent as he waved his hand and said, Xiaohu, our skating rink is closed today. You don't need to busy yourself here anymore. You can go back first. Looking at the middle-aged man at the side and then to his boss, Jiang Xiaohu then replied after a moment of silence, Boss, we need the money. And you must give it to us today. I'll give you tomorrow. The fatty boss replied in a deep voice. Jiang Xiaohu forced a smile and said, Boss, it's no good. I owe money to big brother Hu Zi. He said he will hack my hands off if I don't give him the money today. How about you give me some money first? I guarantee that I'll immediately get my ass off here after I got it. The fatty boss looked at the middle-aged man. Are they reliable? asked the middle-aged man. They are very reliable. Xiaohu has been working here for four to five years and he's a professional bouncer. His boss is also one of the very powerful figures in Changbu town and he has been with him since he was a teenager. Then give it to them, the middle-aged man nodded and said. Yes, yes, yes. The fatty boss waved at Jiang Xiaohu and said, Tell the other four to wait outside while you come with me to get the money. Bloody hell, you're good, but you love gambling way too much. Sooner or later you'll die as a poor bloke with your gambling debt. A strange light glinted in Jiang Xiaohu's eyes. He raised his head as to cover up his eyes and intentionally revealed an embarrassed look, saying, Who doesn't have hobbies? Don't worry, though. I know my limit, so I won't join the game if the stake is too high. A minute later, Jiang Xiaohu got himself a fat envelope. He glanced around and found that the previous middle-aged man was gone. Then, he whispered, Boss, who are these people? They even dare to carry guns. Are they not afraid of? The fatty boss's face changed as he growled in an undertone voice, Don't ask so carelessly. This is not something for you to know. Hey, what do you mean, boss? Jiang Xiaohu deliberately showed an angry expression as he growled back. The fatty boss was about to reply. But recalling that he'd have to rely upon Jiang Xiaohu and his little brothers later, he toned down his expression and whispered, Xiaohu. I treat you as my own people, so I don't want you to ask around carelessly, since you'll be dead once you know more. Since you're not an outsider, I'll tell you a bit. These people are from the Sun family from Guan City. They kidnapped a guy here to interrogate him. The one behind me is also from the Sun family. Startled inside, Jiang Xiaohu also felt joyful shortly after. He knew that he got a big harvest this time. He even had the possibility of leaving this small place, Chengbu City. Nevertheless, he kept his composure on the surface and whispered back, Boss, you did say you were someone from the Sun family. But I thought you were just bragging. I didn't expect that it turned out to be real. Don't worry, boss. I never heard anything here, and you told me nothing as well. Anyhow, I'll go to Big Brother Huzi and give the money. While for the rest. I'll use it to drag these brothers of mine to have a merry night. Go. The fatty boss nodded. 
Seven or eight minutes afterward, Jiang Xiaohu left the flat-out skating rink along with his several brothers. He then immediately dialed a cell number. Brother Huang, I'm Jiang Xiaohu from Changbu Town. Big Boss has commanded all brothers to pay attention to any movements in Changbu Town. I just found a situation in the flat-out skating rink. The people from the Sun family are probably holding someone in the flat-out skating rink. He's being tightly guarded. Yes, yes. I see. Okay, don't worry. I'll be hiding in the hideout and keeping a watch there. Mmm. Good, yes. All right, I'll secretly show them the direction when they come. Okay, thanks, Brother Huang. Thank you.